Multimodality is a perspective on the social world that recognizes the range of different modes in which people make meaning. Researchers adopting this perspective systematically investigate gesture, gaze, speech, layout, image, and writing, and other modes of representation and communication. This series of four short films illustrates how a multimodal perspective can offer new insights into embodied and technology-mediated interaction, filmmaking, social media and online platforms. The uh, film theorist and semiotician Christian Metz um, who was an extremely influential figure in film semiotics in the 1960s and 70s. I think the proliferation of film theories in film studies is kind of well known and, and you can feel kind of overwhelmed by it. And yet in a strange kind of way, some of those theories are kind of stuck in the 1970s, particularly theories of f how film makes meaning, theories of signification, film semiotics. And it seemed to me that if we wanted to approach film from a multimodal perspective, really what we need to do is to be able to think of all the modes that feed into the moving image together. I think film and editing need to be treated separately, because, first of all because they're the distinctive modes of, of cinema and the moving image, so they have a special status. They do have a kind of orchestrating function, I think of them as a, like a multimodal mixing desk, you know. When I look at a, a digital editing screen, you know, it looks to me like a kind of mixing desk. But I also think in a strange kind of way that they have no content. They're just like an empty grammatical structure into which we put content. And so in, a, in some sort of way, all the other modes have their own content, but filming and editing are like an empty, an empty box that you put the content into. So it's a bit like the grammar and the other stuff of the words. People often like to think of film as a kind of pure form, a kind of pure um, art form in its own right. I think the multimodal approach implies the opposite, really. It implies that film is a kind of promiscuous form, um, which is built on other cultural forms that came before it, and which is now implicated with many other cultural forms in the digital era. When we started thinking about uh, the moving image and a way to analyse it in relation to multimodality, we wanted something that would kind of sound technical and, and be distinctive and stand for a specific multimodal approach to film. So we thought the, word, the Greek word for move, the Greek word for image, kinane and icon, put them together and you have the kinaiconic mode. What kinds of modes do you think are contributing to that image? Yes, and um, what would you say about the light then? Maybe, maybe their gazes are crossing at some point, yes, out here. Angle of the camera? Very tight shot, very close up, yeah. Okay, so a lot of modes going on here, including hairdos, you know? So, uh, and hair dye. Multimodality is very much about the immersion. So we are asking the students to look in a very fine-grained way at how they're telling a narrative rather than standing back and having a kind of uh, media studies approach to film. This is a call by Dean for the plurality of media in a world which he argues has witnessed the decline of celluloid. There is this tension I know between, well, yeah, what is the point of doing a, a transcription? You're changing it from one media into another. It's, it's this notion again of documenting something and through the process of documentation, through this other media, I'm beginning to explore you know, cinematic effects or filmic effects or whatever. You can, you can transcribe it by laying it out like that, horizontally, like a sort of audiovisual sentence. Or you can kind of do it vertically. You can have columns, you know, for each mode, which, which takes you in a different direction. You're not thinking so much in a linear narrative way. You're thinking more about the functions of the modes and how far down you want to go in the analytical oh, process. No, I just no, I never live up. Excuse me, you don't sell urns, do you? This example comes from a filmmaking project with 11-year-olds, okay, and they're making an animated film. It's actually a subset of animation called Machinima. Oh, it's a kind of animation that comes out of video game culture. Now kids make films in schools, people make films on their mobile phones, they upload them on YouTube. There's a much bigger case now for everybody to have some sort of sense of how meaning is made in film and how it relates to other 
other things that we might call literacy, so how meaning is made in literature or games, and increasingly these, these media overlap. State your business. My main approach is what I call a kind of metamodal breakdown. So I like to break them down, map them out, and then at least you know you're not really missing some small detail that actually could turn out to be quite important. So I think, you know, the, the role for education is still clear.